Hello, my friends. Hello, and welcome once again to Stately Vaughn Manor, where it's Wednesday. That means it's Epic Comic Book Wednesday. Every Wednesday, I'll talk about a certain comic book, graphic novel, or comic book subject. Steve Donahue over on his channel will talk about the same comic book, graphic novel, or comic book subject. It's our world's finest team-up that we do once a week. And this week, Roger and I have something special. We have Dracula. Dracula. Dracula, the most popular vampire of all time. And he was pretty popular in the comic books back in the 1970s. Marvel Comics. Marvel Comics did Dracula in the 1970s. They did The Tomb of Dracula in the 1970s, which was a really popular comic book. Far and away, the best and most popular horror comic book that Marvel did. Marvel did a lot of great horror comic books, and they were great. They were great. This is definitely the best one. Tomb of Dracula. Excellent comic book. Most of the issues were written by, Mar by Marv Wolfman. All of the issues were drawn by Gene Colan. It was just... It was a masterpiece. It was a masterpiece. And the popularity of this color comic book made Marvel decide to give Dracula his own black and white comic book. They had a line of black and white magazines that were comic book magazines, and they made a comic book magazine called Dracula Lives, kind of a companion to this, the same way that the Savage Sword of Conan was a companion to Conan the Barbarian. And in the pages of Dracula Lives, they had a, you know, they had different stories, but they had, they decided to adapt the original novel Dracula, which they had not done and never did do in the color comic book. But they decided, you know, let's do a version of Bram Stoker's Dracula. Let's adapt Bram Stoker's Dracula. And so Roy Thomas, Roy Thomas, the writer who wrote everything pretty much for Marvel, wrote, Roy Thomas wrote a lot. And he's probably most famous for Conan the Barbarian. Probably he did just such a wonderful job bringing Conan to comic books. And he made that comic book the success that it was, I think, along with the help, of course, of Barry Windsor Smith and John Buscema. But he was the one who wrote the adaptation of Bram Stoker's Dracula, and Dick Giordano did the art. And every month, in Dracula Lives, or every issue of Dracula Lives. I can't remember if Dracula Lives was monthly or bi-monthly. I just can't remember. But every issue of Dracula Lives, starting with issue six, I think, they had a chapter in this ongoing adaptation. And it was great. And then, before even the halfway point, I believe, Dracula Lives was canceled. It was canceled. There was another Marvel black and white comic book called Legion of Monsters. I think it was Legion of, the, of Monsters. And that came out and Marvel decided, hey, we, can, we could put our adaptation of Dracula in the Legion of Monsters. And we'll just finish out the adaptation of Dracula in the Legion of Monsters magazine. The Legion of Monsters magazine lasted one issue. So, this awesome adaptation of Dracula in comic book form for Marvel Comics in the 1970s was not finished. It just, it was just over because there was no place to put this adaptation of Dracula. And so it just ended. And it's too bad because, like I said, it was an excellent adaptation. Roy Thomas did a great job on the script. Giordano is, has never been my favorite artist. He, he's done a lot for DC Comics, and he's done a lot of inking. He was an editor for a while. As an artist, I guess I've always found him kind of uninspired. 
this is just me, but he did a really good job on the Dracula adaptation. And so it was a shame that it ended, and it looked like it was ended forever, but no, in 2004, decades after the last chapter of Dracula, Roy Thomas and Dick Giordano were invited back to finish Dracula, the adaptation of Dracula, for a limited series. And so they both came back and they both finished up the adaptation of Dracula. And it came out as a limited series and then they printed it in this very shiny graphic novel, Dracula by Roy Thomas and Dick Giordano. For this, they colored it because this was originally in black and white. So they colored it and they, and they presented it as one graphic novel, which is kind of amazing if you think about it. It's, you know, Roy Thomas and Dick Giordano were still around and still willing to go, to go back to this project and finish it up. And I think both of them kind of felt like this is, this was a great opportunity because, you know, neither one of them were particularly happy that they were not able to finish this, which is understandable because it's a great piece of work. It's probably, I, I've read a few adaptations in comic books of Dracula. There are plenty of, plenty of adaptations of Dracula out there. I read a few of them. I think this is almost certainly the closest to the book. It follows the story pretty closely. Roy Thomas liked the book an awful lot. So he was, he was careful to keep the plot and everything pretty close to the novel. And I appreciate that. You can kind of tell just from looking at the edges where the first part ended and the second part began. Because one way you can tell is that in the original magazine version, there was no, the panels never bleeded to the ends of the page. But as soon as you get to the 2000s, where this kind of thing happened all the time, then you see the panels going all the way to the edges of the page, which is not something you would ever see in the old black and white magazine. I kind of wish that didn't happen. I kind of wish they had kept the format the same, but in other ways, they stayed really close to what they were doing, which is sort of impressive. You know, when you get an artist in particular who, you know, he hasn't done this particular project for 20 years and all of a sudden he's back on the project, it, you know, it's kind of cool that he was as close as he was. And it's just done so well. It's, it's, You've, you've got all of the characters. They don't all look like I would have pictured these characters looking. But they look right, you know, and Dracula looks right. And this particular story, Dick Giordano does very well. Like I said, I, I, I've always found him... He's never been my favorite. But he does such a good job with this story all the beats are right, everything really works in this. And there are just some great moments, like when we have Dracula scaling down, <laughs> scaling down the castle wall, you've got the woman begging for her child, who she knows has been taken to this castle and is going to be used for food for the vampires. Pretty grisly stuff. In fact, this whole opening section is just like it is in the novel. It's it's the best part of this graphic novel version of the story. It's just done so well. And then we get the voyage of the Demeter is, is or the Demeter is done very well as well. The, the artwork is, is great there. And then we get to the newer chapters. 
the panel layouts are different. The artwork isn't quite as good, I think. But still, it's pretty darn good. I, I think the quality isn't quite up there with the opening chapters, but, you know, it's just remarkable enough that they managed to finish this thing and that it's as good as it is. And it is really good. And these later chapters have some great moments. Like there's Lucy as the vampire. She just looks ferocious. And she is ferocious in this scene where they go to Lucy's tomb. Lucy, who has just become a vampire. Spoilers. Sorry. But yes, Lucy has just become a vampire. And it's, it's just great stuff. And, you know, it's, it's fantastic. The script for the latter part of the story is every bit as good as it was for the opening part of the story. Like I said, stylistically, there's quite a difference, especially with the size of the panels, which quite a bit different from the opening chapters. I think the opening chapters, yeah, they're, they're, definitely, they're definitely better. Um, the quality is better. They've, they've gotten more of a horror atmosphere, even though some great grisly stuff happens at the end. Giordano does a very good job keeping the characters consistent. You know, we had all, we've had those decades in between, but he does manage to keep the character designs the same as they were in the earlier parts of the story. So that was cool. The figures do seem stiff. Giordano has always kind of been like that. He's always kind of had his stiff figures, and that does show up more with older Gior Giordano than when he was younger, I feel. But still, it's pretty awesome and I mean the the work itself is really good and I, I think this whole thing is certainly from what I've seen and I've seen quite a bit of Dick, Dick Giordano's work this is the best stuff he's ever done I think Roy Thomas like I said always good well almost always good and he does just such a great job with this and it was just so cool that after all of that time, from the 70s to the 2000s, you know, they got the chance to finish this. And so that was really cool. Uh, at the end of this, we get the covers for the individual issues when this story was reprinted, the earlier parts were reprinted, and then you had the newer stuff, which had never been printed before so that was cool and also at the end of this you get you got the covers to those original dracula lives issues and the uh the one legion the legion of monsters issue that came out the one solitary issue with uh neil adams with the neil adams cover that's pretty cool i wish i, I kind of wish i had that i don't have any of the original issues anymore of Dracula Lives or that Legion of Monsters. I've never owned that. But I did have a couple of the I did have a couple of the Dracula Lives like years ago. And I guess I never realized that that adaptation was never finished. I just figured I could never find those other issues of Dracula Lives where it was finished. I didn't know. I was collecting these as a kid. And so it was awesome when this came out and it was, it's just wonderful that it was finished. I do think that this is the best comic book adaptation of Dracula that I've seen. I've seen others where the artwork is a little better, but this is the closest to the book that I've seen. And, and that includes the one that came out from Dynamite a few years ago. That was pretty good. Um, this is better, I think. And like I said, it's better than most of the, well, it's better than all the adaptations I've seen of Dracula. I think, I think this is the best one. Still available. 
so you can get it. It's fantastic. Roy Thomas, Dick Giordano, Dracula. There you go. And I, Roger and I actually should, on Monday, if all goes well, we should actually have an episode about Dra uh, Bram Stoker's Dracula coming up. But, you know, Roy Thomas got here before Bram Stoker. It works that way around here at Stately Vaughn Manor sometimes. Okay, guys, I will catch you next time.